Welcome back to the most commonly asked aquarium questions. Today, we're gonna answer the question, what size aquarium do I need for fill in the blank fish? Just like with last week's question, this one doesn't really have a generic answer. There's a few factors we have to consider that will get us to where we need to be. First is gonna be the most obvious. What kind of fish are you trying to get? I always recommend to fish keepers that they go to the pet store and shop for fish prior to their tank. I know that might seem backwards, but trust me, it's not. Here's the situation. You find this perfect spot in your home for an aquarium. The space measures about 40 inches wide and you don't want to fill up every square inch of the space, so you go with something a little smaller. So you look around and you see that a 29 gallon, which by the way is a great tank to start with if you're brand new to this, is 30 inches wide. This will be perfect because it'll leave you room on either side to be able to get in there and do your work. Plus, it'll be nice to be able to see in the side of the tank and not just the front. So you grab that 29 gallon tank along with a light and heater and filter and some decorations and all that stuff and you rush it home and set everything up. Man, this is a good time. You spend the next few weeks getting everything going. You've got your aquascape looking really good. You put in some live bacteria and maybe some fishless fuel to get the cycle going and everything's coming together. Once you've determined your aquarium is ready for fish, it's time to do the best thing in the hobby, which is go to the fish store and shop for fish. I don't think there's a fish keeper alive that would argue that shopping for fish is not the best thing about this hobby. I mean, it is why we do this, especially if you have a fish store near you that has a whole huge selection rather than the big box stores that only have a few tanks or something like that. Something with a huge selection and you just go in there and look for fish. Oh, there really isn't anything better. But there is one thing about this glorious part of the process that can ruin it. You go into the fish store and since you're new at this, you go to the employee and ask for help selecting your fish. He or she should ask you what size tank you have, which of course you'll say a 29 gallon and you're walked over to the area with all the cute little fish. And you're like, wait a minute, I want the big fish, not these little ones. But the employee says, well, those fish need a tank that's much bigger than a 29 gallon. So you're like, okay, well, how about these geophagus over here? No, those won't fit in your tank either. Okay, well, these peacocks are really pretty and have a lot of really cool colors. Nope, won't fit. Frontosas are awesome with the black and blue stripes. Uh, no, they can get a foot long. Flower horns? Nope. Discus. Uh-uh. Oscars like that weird guy on YouTube. Definitely not. Especially since that guy likes them. Well, what can I have then? Let's go look at the Tetras and the Live Bearers. If you did this ahead of time, you wouldn't have to deal with all this. So again, my advice is to go to the fish store first or just watch a bunch of videos on YouTube and find that fish that you connect with and set everything up with that fish in mind rather than the tank in mind. Now you might say, well, if I get my heart set on a bunch of frontosas and then realize I only have 40 inches to put a tank in, I'm kind of dealing with the same thing, but in reverse. Well, not necessarily. If you're set on frontosas and you find that they really ought to be kept in a 125 and then you find that 40 inch spot, you're gonna say, well, that spot's not gonna work, but if I move this plant, slide this table out of the way and move that picture up, it'll fit perfectly. Now you've made room for the 125 and can set everything up to accommodate that fish that you fell in love with. Yeah, that 125 is gonna cost a lot more money than a 29 gallon, but hey, you picked frontosas, not me. So make the decision of what fish you want first and that'll tell you what size tank you need to move forward with that fish. But how do you find out what size tank they need? Well, this is where things can get pretty complicated because all you really have to go by is word of mouth. And let's face it, that's not all that reliable. Let's go back to Frontosas for a second. You just heard me say they should be in 125 gallon, but you might watch another video and the fish keeper says they can easily fit in a 75 gallon. Hell, you can even watch a video of me from back in 2012 where I have them in a 75 gallon. 
what about Oscars? One of my personal favorites. You'll see me keeping them in a 360 gallon, but then you look around and you'll see people with them in 125 gallons, 90 gallons, 75 gallons. Who's right and who's wrong? Well, in this wonderful world of glass boxes full of water, there's unfortunately no concrete answer or rule for these things. Yeah, you'll have people that'll say if you put Oscars or Frontosas in anything smaller than a 125, you're committing animal cruelty, while others will tell you they've had their Oscars in a 75 gallon for five years and they're perfectly fine. This is all just so confusing. I, I don't even know who to listen to. The truth is we're dealing with a hobby that's driven almost exclusively by people's personal experiences. Listen, I've done well over 1,000 videos on this channel over the last 10 years, and I've never once called myself an expert. I've just shared with you what works for me and what doesn't work. You might agree, or you might think I'm dead wrong. Some people might be frustrated by that, but I love it. I love it because there's no right or wrong answer for pretty much anything in this hobby. What works for me might not work for you, and vice versa. Now, of course, this is not an invitation to just do whatever you want to do. Yeah, go put 12 Oscars in a five gallon tank. No, I'm certainly not saying that. What I am saying though, is there is no book of rules that says in this hobby, you have to do everything this way or else you're going straight to hell. Wait, there is a book that says that. But you know what I mean, it's not an aquarium book. All right, let's do what we did last week and let's go through a list of some of the most popular fish and I'll give you an idea of what size tank they need to be in. Now, keep in mind, I'm just giving you my opinion. If you keep these fish in something smaller, I'm not gonna show up to your house and yell at you. Or will I? Okay, let's start with the aforementioned discus. I've known people to keep them in all kinds of aquariums, but to be safe, I'm gonna recommend a 90 gallon or larger. Discus are so precious. We want to do what's right for them. Oscars and Frontosas, like we talked about earlier. It would be great if you put them in at least 125, but if you have to put them in a 75, I'm not going to yell at you. Flower horns. I'm going to say 90 gallons or larger, and it's unfortunate because that's a fish you're going to want to keep alone. And that's a lot of tank for just one fish. I can't wait to see what the crazy flower horn people say about that in the comments. Angelfish, 29 gallons or larger. African cichlids, starting with peacocks, I'm gonna say 75 gallon. Imbuna's a 55 gallon and Haps, 125 gallon. You're gonna see these fish in all different size tanks, so don't get confused. Do the right thing and give them their space. You don't need to go crazy like me and put them in a 240 gallon, but put them in as big a tank as you can. South and Central American cichlids. This would include things like Midas cichlids, fire mouths, Texas cichlids, green terrors and jaguar cichlids. Let's also put them in 125 or larger. And also, I don't know exactly where all these fish are from. If I mention one that's not from South or Central America, don't give me a hard time. Now let's get into some of the smaller fish. Betas, neon or cardinal tetras and celestial pearl danios need to be in a five gallon. Yes, you heard me correctly. Get your beta out of that one gallon tank on your desk. One of the most popular fish in the hobby, guppies. You need to put them in at least a 10 gallon. But wait, John, now I know you're full of crap because guppies are the same size as cardinals and CPDs. Yes, they are, and yes, I am full of crap, but that doesn't matter. Guppies are gonna reproduce like crazy. So if you put them in a 10 gallon, you'll have room for them to expand their family. Live bears like mollies, platies, and swordtails should be in at least 20 gallons because, yeah, they're going to multiply too. Tetras, rasboras, and barbs are difficult to say because some of them will get a little over an inch while others will get two inches or even three inches in some cases. I'm still going to say for most of them, a 20 gallon will be good enough, but do a little research before you purchase and remember bigger is always better. Thankfully, my wife doesn't feel that way. Now I can't possibly give you every single fish and what size tank every single one of them needs, but hopefully this will give you a little guidance and help you get started. Just remember, pick your fish first, then find out what size tank they need, go and get that tank, get it all set up, and then go get your fish. If you do it that way, I promise you'll be happier and everything should work out just fine. Thanks so much for watching, bye.